Thor said, to induce men and angels to find the way of resurrection. This is the greatest of all teaching. Man says, O oh God, raise your servant up. And the Lord says, Hold up your hands and I will lift you up. But man will not. Man says, Send wise and holy angels to me, O oh Lord, to guide me in righteousness and good works. And the Lord says, That which you ask of God, even so do to your fellows. But man will not. For if you ask for love, then give love to your fellow humans. If you ask for wisdom, then impart wisdom for the wholesome benefit of others. If you ask for power, be willing to harmoniously work with others toward a good and worthy goal. But all too often man will not follow through on the second part of the arrangement for he desires the fruit without labor. As it, the situation, is with man on earth, even so do we find it in Hada. To induce angels to develop themselves, by taking hold with their own hands, that is, assuming ownership over their own behavior, which is synonymous with taking on responsibility for their own actions, and by the exercise of their own talents, this is the work of lords and gods. To rule over them without their knowing it, the situation, so as to lead them in the right way, this is wisdom. The first passion of man is to eat, the second, the sexual desire, the third, to make others serve him. And if he accomplishes the latter, then he is indeed the prince of evil. For he then holds dominion to the hurt, to the damage, of others. As man builds these habitations in his soul on earth, how vain becomes his effort for happiness in heaven. To teach him to undo all his past, and to make full restitution to others. This is the work of gods and lords over spirits of darkness. Thor established 2,000 educational colonies in Atmosphere, besides innumerable places of manufacturing and building, teaching the angels of heaven how to provide habitations for those born of earth into spirit life. In three years of dawn, Thor had prepared four billion brides and bridegrooms for Aetherian ascension. Now all this time, the angels of Atmospheria had been taught much in regard to the emancipated kingdoms in Etheria, and of the splendor, majesty and power of gods and goddesses living there. Thor spoke from the throne of God, before the holy council, saying, Send swift messengers with greetings to Betidus, goddess of Taro, in Etheria, and say to her, Thus says Thor, Jehovah's son, Orion chief of Donga, Come to the heavens of the earth, I have four billion brides and bridegrooms as Jehovah's harvest. Provide an area of great size and splendor, for its presence shall enchant my people. The swift messengers departed. And the appropriate officers at once began preparing to receive Betidus. Others were sent into other parts of Atmospheria with fireboats, to bring Atmospherians to Gao so they could perceive the glory of the higher heavens as manifested in the descent and ascent of the Ariada. All these things were accomplished. Betidus came in great splendor, and all the kingdoms and sub-kingdoms of Gao were filled with the billions who came to witness the ceremonies. This, then, was the size of Betidus's Ariada. The diameter, east and west and north and south, was 2,000 miles to the borders of the photosphere and 9,000 miles high. The ship within the photosphere was 100 miles east and west and north and south, and was 200 miles high. Of beams the entire length, there were 12,400,000, and of uprights, 2 million. But of the short beams and short uprights, they were numerous accordingly. And there were a sufficient number of chambers within the Ariata for every soul to have one, and, Besides these, there were halls and temples within, also suitable for music and other entertainments. The colors, shades and tints of the mirrors and opaque ornaments, both movable and fixed, were provided in all possible ways, for ornament and for service, the beauty of which had never been surpassed in Donga. And when the whole Ariata was completed, it looked like an oval globe of light, with a framework. The transparent and opaque parts within, alternated, so as to add beauty to every part. 
and it was fitted and equipped for the third resurrection, having no storage places for atmosphere, or anything in common with the lower heavens. To add still further to its splendor, Betidus had her Ariata ornamented with illuminated banners and streamers, so that at a distance, when seen descending, the whole vessel looked like a sun surrounded on every side with movable stars and waving streams of light. Among her hosts, the hosts of Betidus, were one million trumpeters and players on harps, and two million singers. In the center at the front of the Ariata ship was the Holy Council Chamber, with four million members. Above the council chamber was the chamber of worship, and at either side were the halls for dancing and social reunion. When Betidus's ship neared the atmospherian kingdom of God, millions of her hosts stationed themselves on the galley beams and stale irons, adding a scene of life to the ethereal ship of surpassing beauty. Betidus had provided her ship with ballast, so that, when she came within the Earth's vortex, she could stand her ship where she desired, while the Earth and her heavens turned their axial course, so that both mortals and angels could witness the brilliancy and glory of the works of Donga's chief goddess. And thus Betidus stood in her ship of fire, just beyond the plateau of Gao, while the Earth and her heavens made one revolution. The next day she, Betidus, descended into Gao, where God and his lords, under the direction of Thor, Jehovah's son, had prepared their mighty audience. When the Ariata ship was made fast, made secure, the chief marshal of Gao and the chief marshal of Betidus's hosts met, and conducted Betidus up in front of the throne of God. Thor said, in Jehovah's name, welcome, daughter of light. Betidus said, Praise the Almighty. In love, I have come to answer your prayer, O Thor. Then God spoke, saying, Welcome, O Goddess Betidus. Come and honor my throne. Then Betidus went forward in a flame of light, and was greeted in the manner of gods and goddesses. After which she sat in the center of the throne. And at once the ceremonies of initiation for the brides and bridegrooms were accomplished. Then came a day of recreation, and after that, Betidus and her hosts, together with the four billion brides and bridegrooms, entered her Ariata, and departed upward for the Aetherian heavens, 